Are you a Carlson deep down and love sweet buns? You will surely like ancient Egypt. There was always order with baking, of course, if you were lucky with the Nile spill and the year turned out to be fruitful. At least 15 words have been preserved indicating the varieties of bakery products of that time, from barley, spelt and wheat, from unleavened and yeast dough, soft and crispy, airy and stuffed, with honey and fruits, as well as with butter and garlic baking bread was a laborious task. The grain was poured into a stone mortar and ground there with passels. Then they were sifted from the floor and sent to a stone mill from to heavy millstones. The grain was filled in small portions between them, and the top stone was manually moved back and forth. Each portion had to be processed several times to achieve fine grinding of the flour. The dough is kneaded, poured into metal or clay molds and sent to the oven. After baking, buns, pita bread and other tortillas were recalculated. The result was recorded. Accounting was extremely important for the Egyptians, and only after that they went to the table. Beer production has also been linked to bakeries. At first, special loaves were baked, when from wheat, when from barley, but they were not baked enough, so they remained raw inside and crusted only on the outside. These loaves were broken into pieces, watered with date juice, often adding aromatic herbs, and left to ferment in special jugs. Dear Papadens, if an ancient Egyptian offers you a glass of beer, do not try to compete who will drink more. Beer bowls, stone, metal and ceramic, then had a capacity of one or two liters. An adult Egyptian drank an average of two such bowls a day. It is unlikely that you will impress a drinking companion with the ability not to get drunk. For a long time it was believed that beer was invented by the Egyptians. Then the first brewers began to be called Sumerians. But recently, in September 2018, it turned out that beer is even more ancient. A group of scientists led by Professor Li Liu from Stanford University has discovered the oldest brewery near Haifa, Israel, with an age of 13,000 years. It was created by the Natufians who lived in the Mesolithic era. Hunters, fishermen and gatherers, in short, cavemen. Beer was brewed in caves. Shallow pits were hollowed out on the floor, in some the collected plants were stored, in others they were crushed, in others they were heated. Even primitive beer required a complex technological process. It was necessary to germinate the collected wild grains so that they became sweeter, that is, to prepare malt, grind the seedlings and heat the resulting puree, add wild yeast for fermentation the beer turned out to be thick and low alcohol. Li Liu suggests that beer was originally a ritual drink, they commemorated the dead. In addition to beer, the Egyptians loved wine, it was made from grapes, pomegranates and other fruits. The main thing is that it should be sweeter. Honey and carob pods were added to the wine. It was repeatedly poured and boiled so that it would not sour and thicken. The aging of the wine was measured by the number of transfusions, not by years. It was considered a real delicacy. Fresh milk. In the Egyptian heat, it was necessary to try very hard to keep the milk from spoiling. However, milk lovers have come up with something, unglazed clay jugs with large pores and intense evaporation. The neck of these jugs was plugged with a bunch of grass, which served as a stopper and possibly had bactericidal properties. Thus, the likelihood of consuming milk rather than yogurt increased. Of course, the ancient Egyptians did not limit their food to bread. Meat took pride of place on the table, both game, most often gazelles and oryx antelopes, but sometimes wild buffaloes and even sacred hippos and crocodiles. And beef, the ancient Egyptians bred eua, large African bulls with large horns, and fattened them to such an extent that the animals could not move due to obesity. Then the bull was slaughtered and a feast was held. The meat had to be eaten quickly, otherwise it would spoil. Meat was either cooked in a cauldron, boiled and stewed in milk, oil or fat, often with vegetables, or fried on a spit. Meat on the table was a privilege of the rich. Ordinary people had the opportunity to eat it if they worked on the construction of the pyramids. The pharaoh needed strong and well-fed builders, so the supply was carried out at public expense, and there was enough meat on the menu. Those who could not afford meat could catch fish, fortunately, the Nile and the Mediterranean Sea flow nearby. Mormers, Chromus, Lobans, Nile Clarias. Do the names of these fish mean anything to you? And the Egyptians were well acquainted with them, especially in salted and dried form. If the poor could not afford meat, then some rich Egyptians had no right to eat fish, for religious reasons. There were times when it was considered unclean food. Most often, such prohibitions concerned priests. Another source of protein is poultry, both geese, 
ducks and chickens familiar to us, as well as exotic species such as teals or cranes. Cranes, by the way, were bred, the Egyptians domesticated four of their species. Fried cranes were considered a delicacy. There were few fruits and vegetables, despite the warm climate. Melons, watermelons, grapes, pomegranates, dates, apples, figs, olives, mimosa and sycamore, very rarely and for a lot of money, coconuts, legumes, peas, beans and chickpeas, onions and garlic, cucumbers, radishes, lettuce, cabbage, papyrus shoots. That's all, until the first centuries of our era, when the fashion for cherries, pears, peaches and almonds came from Rome. Curiously, the Egyptians knew spicy herbs, dill, parsley, celery, but they didn't eat it. Parsley was generally a memorial plant, funeral wreaths were woven from it. The ancient Egyptians did not gather the whole family at a table. They are sitting at tables designed for one or two people. The head of the family ate separately, his wife separately. Often at this time the maid combed her hair and applied makeup. Children were not allowed at the tables at all, they were sitting on the floor. Banquets are another matter. They were carefully prepared for them, tables and walls of the hall were decorated. Incense was lit, singers, dancers and musicians were invited and, of course, as many delicious dishes as possible were placed on the table. The guests in elegant clothes greeted the presenter with solemn speeches, he answered accordingly. Dear Papadans, remember, if you are invited to a feast in ancient Egypt, you will not be able to get rid of a phrase like peace to this house. Here's a short answer for you, a very short one, an example of how it should be. May the mercy of Amen be in your heart. May he send you a happy old age. May you spend your life in joy and achieve honors. You get into the chariot, you have a golden-handled whip in your hand, you have new reins, Syrian stallions in harness. You are indestructible, and your enemies are falling. The bad things that have been said about you do not exist. The servants place the guests according to rank, the most honorable ones on chairs inlaid with precious stones, the less honorable ones on stools, and the rest on pillows or mats. Sometimes men and women sit separately, on the right and left hand of the owner, sometimes the spouses sit next to each other. To the music and singing, the servants carried the main dishes and drinks, and when the guests satisfied their first hunger, they were brought. A coffin with a mummy, sometimes, however, with a wooden doll depicting a mummy, look at her, the owner would say. Let's eat, drink and enjoy while we're alive. And the merry meal continued. Do you think it was only in the 21st century that people started eating junk food? And their ancestors were wiser. Yes, they didn't have McDonald's, but there were enough similar problems. Especially the ancient Egyptian priests. When scientists from the University of Manchester undertook to study the mummies of priests, nine of the 16 studied mummies were found to have progressive atherosclerosis, an occupational disease, so to speak. The fact is that the gods were supposed to sacrifice food three times a day. And the best in the understanding of that time, fatty and salty meat, bread mixed with bacon, sweets fried in fat and oil, and a lot of alcohol. At the end of the ceremony, the priests ate the sacrificed gifts. Such a diet was not beneficial at any time, therefore, the priests lived for an average of 45 years. The next issue will be about the cuisine of ancient Greece. Follow the news.